What's going on sixpackabs.com? Today I'm giving you the three common misconceptions when it comes down to building muscle. I'm gonna give you the three right out the gate so you know what to expect. The first one I wanna talk about is going to be how much protein you need. A lot of misconceptions surrounding that. The second one that I'm gonna talk about is how often you should eat. A lot of misconceptions around that. And the third one is one that's really interesting and that's should you be lifting heavy? And there's a lot of myths that go around with that. So let's go ahead and get right down to the science. I don't wanna waste any time. First things first, protein. How much protein do we really need? Okay, most of us are told when it comes down to building muscle that we need one gram per pound of body weight. Well, not quite the truth. In fact, a lot of people will even say that you need one gram of protein per pound of body weight that you wish to weigh. So that could be a lot of protein. If you have a 150 pound person that wants to weigh 250 pounds, that 150 pound person would be consuming 250 grams of protein. That's a lot of protein. So let's break this down a little bit more. All of our macronutrients that we consume, proteins, fats, and carbs, all contain oxygen, hydrogen, and carbon. But only protein contains nitrogen in addition to those. So that nitrogen is what we need to be paying attention to. If we are in what's called a positive nitrogen balance, where we have more nitrogen than our body is using, our body uses that extra nitrogen or protein to create muscle. If we are in a negative nitrogen balance, where we have less nitrogen than what's required in our bodies, that's when we're going to actually lose muscle. So the question is, how much protein do you need to be in a positive nitrogen balance? Well, the short answer is, you barely need to be in a positive nitrogen balance. All you need to be is 0.001% positive nitrogen balance before your body shifts gears to protein anabolism and starts building muscle. So there have been a lot of studies that have talked about this, but I wanna reference one study in particular. This study took a look at people that worked out regularly and were comparing what happens when someone consumes a lesser amount of protein with more protein. So this study took two groups of people. One group of people, they gave 0.6 grams of protein per pound of body weight, and the other group, they gave 1.19 grams of protein per pound of body weight. But virtually no difference in muscle mass and strength resulted after weeks of eating these amounts of protein. This is just one study that takes a look at how protein has a powerful effect. There were other studies that took a look at how hard you trained and if it had an instance with how much protein you need. Simple answer is, you don't need more protein even if you're training harder. It comes down to the fact that when you train harder, your insulin sensitivity is higher, which means your body gets more protein sensitive, which means you can actually do more with less protein because your body's gonna utilize it more efficiently. So, in short, where should you land? How much protein should you aim for? I say we split the difference. There's no telltale exact answer, but since we know that 0.6 grams per pound of body weight works pretty well, and we know that 1.19 doesn't change much, let's go ahead and kind of split it somewhere down the middle and say 0.75 or 0.8 is a good place for you to land. And that's the weight that you are now, not the weight that you desire to weigh. Okay, the next one that I wanna talk about is time between meals or small amounts of fasting or heck, even longer bouts of fasting for that matter. Most people think that you need to be consuming food every two hours in order to build muscle. Not the case at all. You see, when you are fasting or when you have longer periods of time between meals, and I'm talking about just eating breakfast, lunch, and dinner even, not just to tout fasting, okay? When you have those longer periods of time, you have small spurts of human growth hormone. This human growth hormone does a lot of different things in the body. It's a 191 peptide chain, but what it ends up doing is it promotes the body to produce what are called chondrocytes. Chondrocytes divide in the cartilage to allow your skin to be smoother, your joints to be better, but it also helps protein anabolism. It helps kickstart the protein to be utilized in order to build muscle or cause what's called hypertrophy. So that hormonal response in and of itself far supersedes the effects of eating every two hours. Now, when we also fast, we also produce beta-hydroxybutyrate, which I talk about all the time, and I probably sound a little bit redundant, but beta-hydroxybutyrate is going to preserve muscle cells, and it's gonna increase muscle cell proliferation. So by setting the standard where the muscle cells don't catabolize and don't break down, any additional protein that comes in on top of that is gonna allow those muscle cells to grow and allow them to divide and allow them to actually cause hypertrophy and cause muscle to grow. So fasting or having time between meals isn't a bad thing. So you don't have to fall victim to eating every two hours like a lot of the fitness industry or the common message boards and everything like that will tell you to do. Lastly, I wanna talk about lifting heavy. This is a big one. And let me totally be honest here for a second. I am not against lifting heavy. I think it has its place. You have powerful hormonal responses that occur whenever you are lifting heavy or doing compound lifts. So don't get me wrong, I'm not saying it's not the way to go, but what I do wanna prove with this concept is that lifting lighter weights and focusing more on how your load is affecting your muscle versus how heavy the load is, 
is a little bit more effective. There was one study that was published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, and what they looked at was groups of individuals that were lifting to 30% failure versus 80% failure. So they were doing lighter sets with more reps. But what they ultimately found is that, believe it or not, there was no difference between the two groups in terms of how much protein they were able to synthesize in the muscle. It didn't affect how much muscle they built. Even if they were focusing on only going to 30% of their maximum effort or 80% of their maximum effort. What this proves is that it's not the weight of the load that matters. It's the time under tension or the focus of the load and how long that muscle is exposed to the load. Okay, that's just one study. I actually have to bounce back and give you another study. So this study was published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, and they took two different groups again. One group lifted weights to 55 to 60% of their one rep maximum. The other group lifted to 80 to 90% of their one rep maximum. Well, guess what? Both groups activated the exact same gene pathway that is needed to build muscle in the exact same way. It didn't matter whether they lifted 55 to 60% of their max load or 80 to 90% of their max load, proving that you don't have to be lifting close to your one rep max or lifting super heavy to affect the genetic mode that allows you to build muscle. So that's some simple, simple science that breaks that down. I do have to make sure that I say that progressive resistance is always important. Your muscles are going to adapt. That's why they get bigger. So we do have to pay attention to the fact that even if we're focusing on time under tension, we still need progressive resistance. As you get stronger, you're going to have to incrementally increase the weight, but you don't need to increase it by these massive, massive loads. Remember, it's not the weight of the load, it's the time the muscle is under tension. However, you may start requiring more weight for the muscle to be under tension. That's where you have to make sure you understand what I'm saying, because I'm not just saying that you can lift the same amount of weight day in and day out and build muscle. You still do have to incrementally increase the amount of weight that you lift. But if you're doing it right and you're staying lean, you're building muscle and you're doing body weight activities, your body weight is going up, giving you just enough progressive resistance to elicit the right response. Anyhow, as always, keep it locked in here on my videos, and if you'd like to learn a little bit more about fasting, you can always click on the link below and check out my science-based six-pack program that you can get that'll teach you everything about fasting. Until then, I will see you in the next video.